The next one is using symbolic gestures. Does anyone know the story of Ernest Shackleton? No. Ernest Shackleton was an explorer back in 1914 who wanted to be the first one to cross the Antarctic. He took a group of 28 people and it didn't go so well. After a few months, their ship actually hit some ice and got stuck. So they had to live on the ship for a few months. A few months after that, the ship started getting eaten by the ice. And Shackleton said, look, we've got to get out of here. You can only take what you absolutely need. Shackleton was a very religious man. He took the Bible that the Queen had inscribed for him before he left on his journey, ripped out the, the uh, flyleaf with, the, with the, um, the letter that she wrote, and threw the Bible into the water. He was a very religious man. He also threw his gold coins and his watch and everything. But the fact that he threw the Bible was a symbolic gesture. He was showing, this isn't going to help us right now. The story goes that two years later when they were rescued, not a good two years, somebody gave it back to him and they retrieved it. I don't know if that's true or not, but it sounds good. But anyway, <laughs> that's, a symbol, that's a symbolic gesture. Does, if anyone's interested in adventure stories and leadership, a good friend of mine, Dennis Perkins, wrote a book about this called Leading at the Edge, where he lists out 10 strategies of leadership from the Shackleton Adventure called Leading at the Edge. He's based out of Madison, he's a, a great, great writer and a great leadership guy. Um, so that's a big symbolic gesture. They don't have to be that big. <laughs> what would happen, and I'll, I'll ask, ask you guys to all do this, and if anyone does, shoot me an email, let me know if you did it. Tomorrow, when you go to work, pick up some Dunkin' Donuts and give it to the people who work around you, sit next to you, see what kind of an impact it has mm -hmm. on them. It doesn't take much, and I don't care if you're the boss or not, it doesn't take much to get people in a positive attitude for the day. You know, there's a, there's a very theory-driven quote, a bad apple spoils the bunch. Yeah. That's really true, and it goes the other way too. Okay? It doesn't take much. Leadership, the art of getting someone else to do something you want them to do because they want to do it. By the time I'm done with you, you're going to think it was your idea. <laughs> because you're going to be so engaged in something. That's what it's about. Because people have to have, have some kind of, they have to be empowered to be a part of something. They don't want to just be a, a, a participant. They want to be active. So how do we get people to do something? Well, we need to know our people. Okay? We need to know our people. I'll give you a little story. Before I went back to school with my master's, my doctorate, I kind of fell into when I graduated from undergrad owning a delivery service. I did that for a few years. This delivery service was based in Long Island, New York, and we had a bunch of people working for us, but we also had independent contractors, 1099s working for us. Now, for those of you who don't know, a 1099 is somebody who could say no to you. Yeah. <laughs> they don't have to do what you want them to do because they don't work for you. They're contractors. So to represent some of my contractors, I have Artie and Harold. Now, their names are pictures. So these represent some of the contractors I have working for me. So now, if it's 4 o'clock on a Friday afternoon, and I'm on Long Island, New York, and I have to get a delivery into New York City, 4 o'clock on a Friday, not so good. And I said to Artie over here, Artie, listen, I'll pay you double if you get this delivery done for me. He'd whine a lot, and he'd say, but I really want to go home and watch Murder, She Wrote tonight, and he wouldn't do it. <laughs> and I said to Artie, listen, we have a customer who needs this delivery done right away. It's really important. We can lose this customer. I need you to please help me out here. Can you do it for me? He would go and do it. Mm -hmm. If I said that second thing to Harold over there, he would say something I'm not going to repeat in this room because I'm being taped, <laughs> basically saying, go do it yourself. But if I said to Harold, I'll pay you double if you go and get this job done, he'd be out the door before I finish the sentence. You need to know your people. Everybody is driven by different things. One person wants a bonus in their paycheck. One person would much prefer to leave early on Friday. Another person might want to come in late because they have to get their son or daughter onto the bus in the morning. If you can understand and know what your people need, you're going to be in much better shape than if you don't.